deep dive into uh, the very beginning of the game. Um, so we're gonna backtrack just a little bit to show Samus's uh, free movement here. Um, so like I just spent a little few missiles, so I'm gonna use this uh, interactive here to replenish. Um, but one of the things I wanna show here is uh, free aim, which for those that have played uh, Metroid Samus Returns, this has made a comeback. Um, you can see a lot of the, the area around as you use it. Um, also has this little tracking system that um, when it's uh, targeting an enemy, it'll make that sound. I want to take a moment to say that as Nate and Sakamoto-san already mentioned, this is the first new 2D Metroid game in 19 years. That's almost two decades. I don't know if you did the math, but uh, that's a lot of years. We've been waiting for this for a long time, so we're, we're really excited to be finally showing this to everyone. <laughs> Here's another returning move from Metroid Samus Returns, which is the melee counter. Um, one of my favorite um, features. Um, and then a new one is, or the development of the melee counter. Whoop. Yeah, let that guy move a little bit back. <laughs> Come back. The melee dash. I really love that because it doesn't break momentum. I can immediately do a counter and immediate damage to an enemy. Yeah, something this game does really well is improve upon the improvements from Metroid Samus Returns. So like you mentioned, we had free aim and uh, the melee counter in that game. And here we have the running, the running free aim, which gives you even more freedom, and the dash melee. So instead of having to stand still, uh, still and wait for enemies to attack you, you can just go get him, which uh, really uh, has great movement to this game. Yeah, I, I love that like Samus moves so well and it's just all that freedom. It's just, this is probably the smoothest I've uh, been able to control Samus in a really long time. Absolutely, and you've opened up the map screen here, something that uh, Metroid fans know to love and adore. <laughs> yeah. uh, the map system is just as important in this game as ever, and it, it really shows you uh, the classic Metroid gameplay, uh, gameplay progression, which is back in full force in this game, where you look at your map, you identify areas that you haven't been to yet or aren't able to access yet. You try and find another way through, find a new ability, push your way forward, fill in the map, lather, rinse, repeat. So that's back and better than ever, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, and this area here is blinking away because there is something here that I haven't discovered yet. Um, so I could use markers to kind of pinpoint it just in case I don't have an ability um, and I have to backtrack here once I'm able to explore it. Um, yeah, don't sleep on those markers. Those can be really <laughs> yeah. important in this labyrinthine world. For sure. Right. Um, but this looks curious. It is really uh, a, a part of the charm of Metroid, though, having this uh, renewed uh, sense of purpose in your backtracking paired with pushing forward. Yeah, and one, another thing I want to pinpoint is the amount of work the dev team put in in Samus's animations, like mm -hmm. just her animation of <laughs> gripping the walls when she can't move or like holding onto the ledge. Mm -hmm. It's just so yeah, looking sweet. around. Yeah, you'll notice little touches everywhere, so keep an eye out for them. Mm -hmm. oh. That seamless transition to these sort of uh, story scenes is great. Little moments like this when you're in uh, helmet view for a moment really add to the isolation uh, and the tone of this game. Yeah, now this game is a, a sequel to uh, Metroid Fusion, but you can see that her suit looks a little bit different than that, so um, that'll be a story element that people will find out what happened uh, when they play the game. We don't want to spoil too much. So these are the Emmy that mm -hmm. Sakamoto-san was talking about, and none of Samus's weapons seem to do anything against them. <laughs> So, run. <laughs> yep. Oh, that slide move is so cool. She looks so cool when she's yeah. sliding. <laughs> yep. It is. Nope. Okay. Oh, no. Just, just no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, missiles don't work either. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, so scary. Uh, about this being called Dread, <laughs> that would be why. Yeah. They're very relentless. Oh, my. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. 
did a little reach for me there. <laughs> <laughs> that was new. Oh. Yeah. That one's clearly not well, but it's still quite frightening. Yeah. Um, I'm glad that it's a bit damaged and can't completely reach to me, but we're going to have to find a different way to tackle that enemy. You know, this thing is a uh, central unit which uh, controls various areas of the planet. Um, it's sort of a biomechanical computer, kind of an homage to uh, maybe similar units in previous Metroid games. And from this unit, uh, Samus can power up, uh, get a temporary power up uh, for her um, arm cannon and turn it into the Omega cannon. Yeah, so yeah, in typical 2D Metroid fashion, we've always seen the camera like, panned around here. And now with the uh, Omega Cannon ability, there's this dynamic camera that you get to see over Samus's shoulder, which is so, so cool. <laughs> yeah, little additions like that really flesh out the classic 2D gameplay without it feeling uh, like it strays too far from what we loved about it. Mm -hmm. Just makes it seem really powerful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Let's see Special. if this works against our uh, <laughs> our Emmy friend here. It takes a little while to charge up, so it does. Don't, don't oh, wait too yeah. long. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> oh, I wanted to make sure I had it line <laughs> yep. of sight. I hope you enjoyed that. That's your <laughs> one shot at it. <laughs> yeah, so it was so powerful that uh, in order to take that Emmy down, um, our we lose the ability of the Omega Cannon, and it goes back to a regular arm cannon. It was worth it, though. We can breathe mm -hmm. easy now. It was for a moment. <laughs> I also want to point out, while you're scrolling your way through all of these uh, different halls, that there are so many different ways to play this game. Uh, like, Teresa is amazing with a missile. She's the queen of the missiles, <laughs> but you can also just... Uh, shoot your regular arm cannon. Uh, you can try and avoid enemies altogether, try and hit them all. Uh, really, it's up to you what kind of Samus you want to be. Yeah, and as as uh, Audrey pointed out to earlier that you could use free aim to do more like line of sight shooting, but you could also just free aim shoot while you're moving as well. good because you need to shoot a lot of different things in this game. So many different <laughs> yeah. things. I want to see a pixelated door and now I'm filled with dread. <laughs> yeah, this is a, a new entryway. Um. Yep, these are the entries to the various zones that the Emmy are patrolling and uh, once you're in there you need to be on the lookout for those. Um. Yeah, uh, you can hear in the background, the music is so atmospheric. It really <laughs> puts you on pins and needles just it listening is to it. Very, I, I am completely on edge because yeah. it's like really <laughs> eerie. Can't seem to climb these yet. Not yet. Yeah, just the detail in the backgrounds and things is great. Oh, and there you go. There it is. Oh, especially during moments like this, you can really appreciate how cool it is to have an HD uh, 2D Metroid game. <laughs> we we tried that already, Sam. Oh. <laughs> it's not gonna work. Hey, it was worth a shot. <laughs> Just try one. again. Maybe we'll work on this one. Now run. <laughs> so luckily, this Emmy can't go through tight spaces, so I have an advantage here. Somehow, Emmy doesn't seem oh. worried. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, it's fast. Oh, you're following mm -hmm. me. I see. Okay, you gotta, you gotta get away from that. That's my recommendation. Yeah, when they go into this uh, <laughs> patrol mode and turn red, um, the door locks until they sort of lose track of you. It's still trying to get at her. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's still looking around, but. Ooh. Try find another way to get to me. Yeah. Also, I don't know if it's my heart throbbing through my <laughs> hands or <laughs> the controller, but it's yeah, it was pretty nerve wracking when facing the Emmy. They're terrifying mm -hmm. species. Yeah, T makes it seem like she's calm, cool, collected, and <laughs> badass. I like to pretend that she's actually as nervous as I am when I play it, but I don't think it's true. <laughs> Do you want to point out like also the backgrounds, like the amount of detail that the developer, the development team has put into like not just the enemies in the forefront, but also in the background. I don't know if you guys can tell the shimmering thing in there. 
Oh, and there, it's moving. It's moving. <laughs> it's okay, <flashing>. that <laughs> doesn't bode well. Yeah, well, probably. Point, note that for the future. Uh, yeah, some of those details kind of tell the story as effectively as, you know, uh, a voiceover or anything. Yeah, if you want to be a bounty hunter, you have to pay attention to details. Mm -hmm. And watch out for gooey enemies. <laughs> <laughs> this is morbid. I love the detail of like the the rib cage <laughs> in the background. You just know something went down there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, the thing about Metroid enemies too is that some of them have patterns and and you can counter them, um, and others don't. Like this one. So I'm just gonna <laughs> just blast them. <laughs> move him out of the way <laughs> so I can use it. Um, and this room is a communication room with Adam who happens to be um, Samus's uh, ship's PC or computer. Uh, we're going to skip this part here just because we don't want to spoil any of the lore, but Dan, if you could summarize for the folks at home. Yeah, so as Samus is exploring, uh, she uploads data to Adam, their ship's AI, and Adam kind of gives little analysis, um, just, just really hints though, not necessarily uh, telling you where to go or anything like that. It's still up to you to kind of explore, but there's some interesting lore in there and um, you know, some, some little hints that you can uh, potentially use. And um, in that one, Adam was basically summarizing the, uh, the Emmy and kind of the limits that they have of patrolling a zone and um, also how dangerous they are, which we, we've kind of seen, but hopefully we won't see too much firsthand here. Also, you can see T doing a great job of just shooting at the environment, looking for secrets, looking for a way forward, because it's not always going to be obvious. You really have to, it's like a puzzle. Mm -hmm. It's not just action, it's not just exploration. There's also a lot of puzzle elements here trying to find the way forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's really cool too how Metroid Dread does this really sweet balance of, you know, the moments where you're allowed to have like some quiet to, uh, solve the puzzles, and then it's interspersed with this really heavy, intense action. Yeah. So here's nope. the, uh, oh, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> nope. Um, that was uh, the Emmy, as Dan had mentioned, they have kind of three modes. One is the surveillance, the other is, uh, which is uh, marked with blue. They're just scanning the area. Um, this red mode is yeah. so bad intense. one. I'm like yeah, playing a mode. game of chase with so it. fast. With it. Oh, God. Um, and then when it has Samus on I, uh, eyesight, uh, it turns red, which is the um, chase mode. Oh, her. Yeah. So yellow is, it's heard, it's heard a noise or sense the vibration, and it's going to go investigate that. Oh. Oh. Oh, gosh. Here's... No? And... <laughs> No. Oh. 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 So the Emmy uh, are pretty re relentless and ruthless. Uh, it is sort of like a permadeath, which is very unusual um, for you know, enemies with uh, in the Metroid series. But luckily, it's not very. It's the game's pretty forgiving. Uh, it allows you to respawn at an area that you were in recently, so we're able to just go back and counter that. Again, yeah, as T said, Insta Kill is new to the series, but uh, it's really great because it offers a chance for you to have that challenging difficulty that I think Metroid fans expect, but without being quite so punishing with the respawning that you just have to play the whole game to get back to where you are. So it's a really wonderful balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when the Emmy are in patrol mode, which is that uh, right now, it's in pursuit of me. Um, they're scanning areas where they last sense movement. Mm -hmm. And so they'll go and investigate it. And then if they see something in eyesight, then they'll go chase it. Mm -hmm. This is such a, a small but really neat touch, the way that Samus moves slower in the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the audio change too. Yeah. I mm -hmm. absolutely love that detail. There's always one little <laughs> that one straggler there. <laughs> I don't need to save. I I'm feeling brave. <laughs> oh, nice dash melee.
See, that really shows how you, you don't have to, to stop to fight these enemies. If you really master that dash melee, you can just mm -hmm. kind of run and gun. Mm -hmm. This little water puzzle. Yeah. I really love the animation of the f water flowing from one area to mm -hmm. the next. Such a cool detail. Now that the water levels change to have access to other areas. And here is uh, a map room. So uh, interacting with these room will grant me more visibility to the um, area that I'm currently in. Um, so we sort of lightly touched on um, the, the narrative of this game, which occurs in the events post uh, Metroid Fusion. And so that's why Samus's look um, looks different. But um, also to point out, back to Audrey's point about, you know, the game is about exploration and action. And so this area of uh, map uh, upgrade allowed me to see more about the map. But you can see that there's still a lot of obscurity here. And so you need to explore in order to uncover more of the area and also um, any secrets involved. So, mm -hmm. yeah, It's also worth noting that uh, this series and this game is full of really juicy lore. So <laughs> uh, whether you're a new or returning Metroid fan, uh, if you've never played a Metroid game before, it really gets you up to speed with anything you need to know to enjoy the story. And if you are a longtime Metroid fan, you have a lot to look forward to. Uh, as Sakamoto-san said, this concludes the story arc between Samus and the Metroids. So uh, we've been waiting a long time for this, and it delivers. It's that little enemy that uh, Teresa just blew up. It's kind of like an item pinata. It gives you <laughs> a lot of <laughs> missiles. Yeah, defeating enemies is a, definitely oh. a boon because oh, um, <laughs> it grants you replenishment for e for energy and also um, missiles. So definitely want to defeat enemies for that. Yeah. I just didn't expect the Emmy to be right on top of me when I <laughs> destroy the autos. That little beeping sound, just I hear oh, it yeah. in my nightmares now. <laughs> they always come up with... Oh, he's persistent. Oh, it's yeah. persistent. Very I, convenient. <laughs> Another little interesting detail about this game is normally in Metroid games, you start at the surface of the planet and you work your way deeper. But in this game, you actually start deep within the planet and try and work your way to the surface. And so that, that yearning towards ascension really adds to the tone of this game as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was, oh, a that sick was slide. really cool. Oh, <laughs> I also love that you don't have to necessarily wait for an enemy to attack in order to counter in this game. If, if you keep an eye out, you can actually sometimes mm -hmm. counter before they, they start their attack. Here's a throwback. So mm. I have to use a missile in order to destroy that cover and then I'm able to access that door. Just one missile though, that's good. Oh, of course. There you go. Yep. I got it. Yeah. That's the other thing about the uh, dash melee is that uh, if you use that on an enemy, you will get, I think, a few more extra items. Here's our first upgrade, the charge beam. So very iconic to the Metroid series. Um, so Samus you know, starts off without any abilities and slowly um, becomes more powerful and able to tackle um, stronger foes, but also be able to uncover or explore new areas that we weren't able to before. Yeah, and uh, suit upgrades are another classic part of Metroid gameplay that is alive and well in this game. I also love you can see if you keep an eye on the background and stuff, there are all kind of uh, cool statues and architecture that mm -hmm. really uh, piques your curiosity about the lore of this world. Nice. I love that too. Mm -hmm. Using the charge beam to make a charge beam spin attack and defeat mm -hmm. some of those enemies is really handy. Oh, that feels good. 
Got some more life, which is always a plus for me. Mm -hmm. Need that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, look at all those items. Yeah, T's doing a great job of showing that once you you really get to know these abilities and uh, become adept at them, you, you start to feel like Samus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> at first you're like, mm, maybe not quite there, but once you get the hang of it, you, you really start to feel like a badass bounty hunter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just so smooth. It's like she's parkouring through this. <laughs> mm-hmm. Ooh. There's more great architecture, but we're not here to look at architecture. We're <laughs> gonna <laughs> shoot things <laughs> and explore. Yes. Doors. So now we can't go through this area because of the water, so we're not able to slide. But we are able to access this door that we weren't to before. Ah, and here's another Emmy door. Um, but in order to not spoil any more surprises here, we're going to leave this as a cliffhanger and uh, end our segment here. All right. Well, that's all we've got um, on Metroid Dread for now. Um, 